What's the matter? Can't sleep? Just need a little clarity. True, 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 true that. You want the customary clarity or the new and improved kind of clarity? Just give me the new stuff. New and improved. New and improved clarity. Clarity, clarity. clarity. Yes, indeed. Clarity, clarity. Come on, come on. There's more. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't bust my balls. You're going to give me four and seven oh. duds. Sweet dreams, Chief. Ah, don't worry. None of your secrets safe with me. Besides, I could use a little juice on my side. What do you think you know, my God? It's like my daddy used to say. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Michio Kaku, what is the theory of everything? The theory of everything is what drives hundreds of physicists around the world. And it could be the crowning achievement of 2,000 years of our investigation into the nature of matter. We want an equation, one inch long, that will allow us to, quote, read the mind of God. We want an equation that will summarize everything we know about the universe. Gravity, light, the electromagnetic force, the nuclear force. We want all of it into a single equation, which will give us not just the Big Bang, the formation of planets and galaxies, but even the formation of people, maybe even love. All of it in a theory that eluded Einstein for the last 30 years of his life. And today, we think we have it. We do? Yeah. Why do we think that? Because we have a theory called string theory. It is fantastic. It is incredible. It has astounded the world of mathematics and physics. And now you can't move in the physics world without bumping into somebody who wants to talk about the 10th dimension, the 11th dimension, the multiverse, hyperspace, time travel. All the things that were once considered science fiction are now centerpiece in our understanding of the nature of everything. You called it a theory, however. It's a theory because we are going to test it with the Large Hadron Collider. You know that Big Bang machine outside Geneva, Switzerland, that some people think is going to tear the world apart? Wrong. It's a machine of science. And we hope to create a mini Big Bang by slamming protons together near the speed of light, recreate a teeny weeny bit of genesis, and from that, extract information that will show us that perhaps string theory really is a theory of everything. And that's what I do for a living. That's my day job. What, where did string theory come from and, and who's the founder of it? You're not gonna believe this. In science, we always say that you make observations, you have a theory, you go make more observations, and it's a very, very tedious process. Wrong. Nobody that I know of in my field under, uh, uses the so-called scientific method. Come on, don't bullshit me. No, I'm telling you, Doug, your brain will not know the difference. And that's guaranteed, or your money back. I work at Goldsmiths. I am the director of the Magic Lab. And in the Magic Lab, we try and use magic as a way of studying the human brain because magicians have developed very powerful techniques that allow them to manipulate your experience and they can hijack your brain. And by understanding some of these principles, we can learn a lot about how the brain works. And so as a scientist, I'm interested in both the techniques that magicians use, as well as the experience that magic elicits. And so what is magic? This is just one of the strange results that comes out of the general theory of relativity, our current best theory of gravity. The first solution of Einstein's equations predicted not only black holes, but also their opposite, white holes. It also implied the existence of parallel universes, and even possibly a way to travel between them. This is a video about the real science of black holes, white holes, and wormholes. Could black holes be the key to a quantum theory of gravity, a deeper theory of how reality, of how space and time works. Black holes are interesting because we have a place called the event horizon where we think that we have full control of the physics. 
we understand what's happening, but there is a fundamental clash between our two basic theories of nature, both quantum theory and general relativity together. So the first wormholes that were imagined were a black hole connecting to its mathematical opposite, a white hole, and you would connect them via a wormhole. So everything goes in the black hole and comes out the white hole. It's mathematical opposite. But then there was more work done on wormholes, especially inspired by Carl Sagan's novel Contact, when he was buds with, with Kip Thorne, a, a, a relativist physicist, astrophysicist at Caltech, where you, you run through more of the equations and you can, in principle, just punch a wormhole through the fabric of space without reference to a black hole or a white hole. But you need some way to pry open space and keep it there. So you need like negative, negative matter that can pull open space rather than collapse space. And so that works, our equations give it to you, but we don't know any substance such as negative matter. So, so wormholes are really just, for now, the realm of science fiction. Black holes, there's some mathematics derived from Einstein that tells us that on inside a black hole, it opens up to another universe, another space-time system. And so if that's the case, what happens to that universe when the black hole evaporates? Nice. Whoever was smoking weed in that universe silvers <laughs> up and it's over. That little universe is gone. I saw that universe. Or I can't believe I saw this universe, man. It was just right there in my thumb. So you're going to write a book, The Universe According to Weed. Is that what you're Yes. <laughs> it's a good book. <laughs> I'll call it Astrophysics for Stoners in a Hurry. <laughs> but another description of the event horizon, which confused people all the way through the history of black hole research, actually, was the idea that the event horizon, when viewed from the outside, is a place in space where time stops. Now, that's a direct prediction of Einstein's theory of relativity from the external perspective. The general theory of relativity arose at least in part due to a fundamental flaw in Newtonian gravity. In the 1600s, Isaac Newton contemplated how an apple falls to the ground, how the moon orbits the earth and earth orbits the sun, and he concluded that every object with mass must attract every other. But Newton was troubled by his own theory. How could masses separated by such vast distances apply a force on each other? He wrote that one body may act upon another at a distance through a vacuum without the mediation of anything else is to me so great an absurdity that I believe no man who has a competent faculty of thinking could ever fall into it. One man who definitely had a competent faculty of thinking was Albert Einstein. And over 200 years later, he figured out how gravity is mediated. Bodies do not exert forces on each other directly. Instead, a mass like the sun curves the space-time in its immediate vicinity. This then curves the space-time around it, and so on all the way to the Earth. So the Earth orbits the sun because the space-time Earth is passing through is curved. What is gravity? We have no idea. Okay, next question. <laughs> wow. No, here's the difference. We can describe gravity. Okay. We can say what it does to other things. We can... We can measure it, predict with it. But when you start asking, like, what it is, I, I, I don't know. Kowalski. Sorry, sir, no clue. So what will be what will be the force pulling a heavier object to the ground and a hair bubble up? How can a force work in two directions at once? That wouldn't make any sense. No, no, it, I, I see what you mean. That's why there's no force going down. That's why Einstein had to come up with his, with his explanation of, of the bending and warping of space-time. That's just a theory, by the way. It's not reality. Everything is, every description is a theory, right? No, no, no. Not if you could demonstrate it. No, 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 prove no, no, it. no, 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 no. Okay. You have to not con uh, confuse the word theory with hypothesis, right? Well, in, in, sci in science, a sure. theory is simply a uh, testable description of reality. A hypothesis is a guess that could yeah. be wrong, could be inferred. Okay, the, yeah, the layman, yeah, yeah. right? 
conflates the two. Right. And they, they, they are totally different distinct right. concepts. So what about so what do you think of just a theory? Right. What people actually mean is just a hypothesis. What do you relativity think? is not a hypothesis, it right. is a theory that has been tested time and again. So what do you think about the scientific theory? No, but that, no, not scientific scientific method. What do you think about the scientific think it, method? Uh, I have yet to come across uh, a more reliable methodology for um, acquiring knowledge from the environment. I would say the scientific method is a method that is used to prove things. For can, example, it, I would say you cannot prove things. In, I can prove that we can build cars. You can demonstrate it. Well, we could, we could get in a car and drive it. Yeah, sure. It physically exists. Yeah, but if you want to be technical, proofs can only be done in the realm of mathematics. Okay, you can demonstrate things in reality. In science, you can only disprove a theory. Oh, that general relativity is a legitimate... Uh, it is, is the description of space. Right. But I can't prove that steel is stronger than wood. Uh, yes. Would you deny that or no? Well, obviously, you have to accept that steel is stronger. If, if, I, I can physically, you, you can demonstrate. I can physically, scientifically yeah, yeah. prove no, no, yeah, yeah, that, no, no. that the, steel the, the, is stronger than different wood. Different types of things. Right? One is yeah. stronger than the other. <laughs> no, no, I'm talking about the demonstration that. Um, I can steel. demonstrate to you that steel yeah, is stronger yeah, than wood. Let me stop you. No, yeah. <laughs> the demonstration that steel is stronger than wood, right? Proving that is different than. Uh, uh, applying the word proof to a scientific theory. You cannot prove any scientific theory. Yeah, because it's yeah. a theory. I agree. Yeah, no, 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 no yeah, but, but yeah, because it is a you can. So you, so you did. So you disregard that the, they're scientific facts. You disregard that. You don't believe that they're scientific. Facts. I, I do. I do. Scientific facts and scientific theory are two different things. So explain to me what a scientific fact is. A, a scientific fact is just simply uh, an observation. Give me an example. Okay, that um, the strength of the gravitational force, uh, you know, at, on average, right, on the surface of this planet is 9.81 meters per second squared. Uh, okay, so I would say that's an observation. That I would have fact. Uh, so, I would say that's not a fact. What is the difference between observation and a fact? An observation is something that you just simply observe. For example, we can observe this is four and I can you can, you can repeat it please. no I can, I can just by looking at it I can tell you it's uh, you it's, can, it's 20 feet tall but that's not a fact the fact will be physically measuring it to see um, how tall it is so I, you, I gave you an example no, no, of a measurable so, fact no no when you're uh, observing something far you believe that the object goes towards the ground first of all right that it's being accelerated towards the ground yes I'm telling you that physics shows that that's not what's happening because you need force to cause motion so if you're claiming that this you don't, you don't need force to cause motion can you show me an example of something like, moving that doesn't yeah, require a force space time. well that's a theory I need something in reality that it's, like something here on Earth. Can you show me something that's moving that doesn't require a force here on Earth? No. No, because again, uh, motion requires a force. So if you're claiming that, 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 that's that, that's not the reason I can't show you. The reason is I cannot manipulate space. Well, that's because, yeah, because you're going into the bigger scale of things. Exactly. Yeah. Going into, you're going into imaginary yeah. business. It's not imaginary. Because it cannot be demonstrated here on Earth. Yeah, but it doesn't, just because something cannot be demonstrated in front of you doesn't mean it's real. It's not real. Right, well, like, oh, I can't, I can't observe uh, galaxies. So it doesn't mean that other galaxies don't exist. So you believe that flying reindeer are possible then, because you can um, disprove that, I guess, or whatever. No, no, no. Or do you uh, have any yeah, 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 that's an excellent question. Now we're getting into epistemology and ontology and the, the very concept of belief. So uh, technically, I have no choice but to be agnostic. I can propose, I can hypothesize that flying rain will exist, but I, it's on me, it's my responsibility to demonstrate exactly. that they exist, right? Exactly, but yeah. I, can, I cannot technically say they do not exist. I could. I could. I trust my common sense, and a reindeer is more denser than the air, and the air will never be able to sustain uh, a reindeer. It would be impossible. You cannot state that. You cannot say, oh, conclusively. You, you have to demonstrate. Okay. That defies physics. Anything that defies physics, in my opinion, I don't accept. If, yeah, physics, the way we... Okay, so there's two types of physics. There's physics, the way... Uh, there's the laws of physics that we humans have constructed as a theory, as a description of the actual reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. But these are two distinct things. 
just how reality actually operates. And then there is our through the science in our interpretation. Scientific method, yeah. Our interpretation. Yeah, our, our the utilization of mathematics yep. and consistent repeated observations, right? To construct a theory or discover a law, right? Yeah. That is consistent under a, a certain assumptions and approximations, right? Okay. For example, relativity, even Einstein admitted this, is incorrect at the quantum scale. It is a classical theory. Okay, yeah. By construction, yeah, yeah, it is wrong. Yeah. By con yeah. Every, everything is wrong. But, but the, it doesn't everything matter. about the heliocentric model no, no, is wrong. Yeah, because every, no, no, no. Here. Every description that you have, that I have, that every human has is wrong. You should have bought a gun instead of a beer, mate. Nah, I don't need a gun. I've got a donk. <laughs>